All right, uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this coffee uh, grinder box that's gonna hold the uh, little album. So first of all, I did go and purchase one of these grinder replacements. Um, I got it at a woodcraft store and it wasn't the cheapest. I mean, it's really heavy duty, but I want this project to look super cute. And so I went and purchased that. It came in a box that looks like this. It's by Wood River, and we have a woodcraft store here, so um, I'm kind of mimicking the look of this for this project. So let's go ahead and get started with the chipboard for the base or the box. So I wrote down the measurements, so let me explain how I came up with these measurements. The four that measure seven by seven, the reason why there's four is I put two together for the top and the bottom. So the seven by sevens are the bottom base and then the top that the grinder is going to sit on. So I just glued those two together to make it more firm and sturdy. And I wanted it to have kind of a thicker edge that you would see. You don't have to do that. So if you don't want that, you can just do two that are seven by seven instead of four. You'll need three that are six by five. So I wanted the box to be a little bit smaller than the top and the bottom base, just like an actual grinder. And then the front is shorter so that I can slide my book in there. And the spine of the book is going to look like the drawer or close to it anyway. And that is six by three and a half. So those are the chipboard pieces. If you go with the four that are seven by seven, go ahead and glue two of them together and then glue the other two together. When you're done, you're gonna to wanna to put uh, your adhesive on the back. I use score sheets. You're gonna do that with all of the pieces of your chipboard, just on one side. After that, you're gonna to wanna to cut your wrap paper. Now, sorry about the mess, I'll go over it. <laughs> so I did two that were nine and a fourth by nine and a fourth. Normally you would have done just nine by nine, but because my chipboard's a little bit thicker, I did wanna make sure that it was a little bit longer so it would wrap around the corner because I angle mine, I miter, rather than do the technique that Tammy does um, where you take out the corners. So that's why I did nine and a fourth by nine and a fourth. You can do nine by nine if you want. You're gonna need one piece that's nine by seven. Now, the reason why that's one of them is because you're gonna need the wings a little bit longer to attach to the two sides, okay? Um, you're gonna need two that are eight by seven. Those two you're gonna wrap on all four sides so you don't need that extra inch like the top one because we're gonna wrap all four sides. The shorter piece that's in the front, you're going to need a piece that's nine by five and a half. Again, you need the wings to attach to the other two sides. So the front and the back of the box have the wings that are longer to attach, and the two that are on the side get wrapped on all four sides, okay? So I have done some of the wrapping, so let me show you what I've done so far. I'm gonna do one of each for you on camera. Here is the shorter front piece, okay? Notice I have the one and a half inch wings on the side, and that's what I'm going to attach the two side pieces to. And you just wrap the top and the bottom. You're going to have two of these that are wrapped on all four sides, okay? And then this is the base with the thicker bottom. And I don't know if you can see that, but it, it is thicker, okay? And then we'll go back and put our pattern paper on. So I'm gonna wrap one of each type with you. So let's start with the larger uh, base. This is the nine and a fourth by nine and a fourth. So I really need a one and one eighth inch border. So I'm gonna eyeball this. I'm gonna go ahead and put my spacers, but I know that I'm not gonna bump this piece all the way up against it. I'm just gonna put it close, okay? I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take the backing off, the double layer. I had to do some piecing of my score tape because I wanted to get it all the way to the edge. And I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode, so I hope people don't call. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it close. 
but not exactly to it. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish that so there's a good stick. I'm gonna move that to the side and I'll go ahead and place the other pieces on also just to kinda kill two birds with one stone. So this one is, um, you're gonna have two of these. This one, it is going to need the one inch border. So let's go ahead and lay that down. This piece was um, five by six. And you'll do two of them that are wrapped on all four sides. Come on, tape. Doesn't wanna come up. Well, for Pete's sake, what's going on? There we go. So this one I can bump right up against the spacers, the one inch borders, and go ahead and flip it over. Now this is the new Artisan. Um, it's an aged look, and I thought that would be good with the coffee. Okay, and then the next one, we're gonna change this out and I'm going to make it one and a half inches so that the connecting pieces are a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm putting the long side across the top and I'm gonna place the six inches going across. And where's my pokey tool? There it is. So look at how I had to piece that one. I don't like to waste any of those score sheets, so I piece it like crazy. It's still faster than doing all those individual three, four inch strips or one inch strips. Gosh, some of it's sticking. It doesn't want to come up. And you can use glue. I don't like to use glue on this part just because I think that it doesn't lay as smooth. So we're done with those spacers. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do this one first. This is the one that we keep the sides open. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this up and over and give it a burnish. On all four sides. Okay, this one I do differently because of the side staying open to connect to the other pieces. So let me get my scissors. The corner here where the two folds met, I'm gonna cut at a diagonal. So I'm taking off a triangle and I'm gonna do that on all four sides. So these are the ones we keep open on the short edge, okay? Now I am just gonna lay down some score tape here and here. I just like to make sure that it lays down well and I'm just gonna put some right here at the edge. And I'll fill in with glue. All right, so this you do with this, one of the six by fives and the three and a half by six, you do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the backing off of one side. And 
And we do wanna put glue up against the chipboard so that you get a nice smooth finish. So I took the small tip off of mine and I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue here and then I'm gonna fill in these empty space here and go all the way to the edge. So even do those little corner pieces. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here and here so that that paper sticks real well. Bring it up and over. And you're gonna burnish. And you do wanna bring this real tight up against the chipboard. Look at all that glue that came out. Woo wee, that was a lot. Okay. Turn it this way, up against that chipboard and out. Now I am going to take my burnishing tool here and just go smoothly across the edge so it is nice and neat on that edge. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Do your glue up against the chipboard so that it will lay nice and smooth. Fill in some glue here. Go to the outer edge also. A little bit on each side of the chipboard, not a lot. They say that, but now that I have that skinny, the fine tip off, a lot more comes out than what I'm used to. Give it a burnish there. Oops. And then up against the chipboard and out, and if you have glue come out, just wipe it off, that's what I'm doing. Turn it here. All right, I am gonna turn this upside down and I'm gonna burnish it up against this chipboard here. So I have a very defined line. So now that my glue has dried, I'm gonna slightly miter by resting my scissors up against the chipboard and cutting at a slight angle, like so. That's what you do for the that one six by five and one six by three and a half. Okay, so I'm going to put those off that one off to the side. So we have two of them. I hope I'm in frame, you guys. I'm not used to this using this camera yet. I hope you can see. Okay, the other ones we wrap all four sides. So let's go ahead and do one of those. I just bring it up and over and then burnish it. Okay, I do take my score tape, it's um, a fourth inch, and I'm gonna put it on the perimeter of the chipboard Really, the score tape I pretty much just use on chipboard now. I don't really use it on anything else. Now, before I put the score tape also along the edge of the paper, I do want to trim the ink, uh, the miter, the corners. So you can do your corners however you want. I just like to take off the uh, corner, and this tool gives me the space I need so that I don't cut it too close to the chipboard. If you don't have this tool, which a lot of you won't, just make sure that when you cut it, you do leave a little bit of space there on the corner. Don't go right up to the chipboard. Now 
I'm going to go ahead and put score tape on the perimeter of the paper. Just on the edges. Go ahead and burnish that down also. And now I always do the long sides first. I don't know why, you probably don't have to. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the backing of the sides so that that's out of the way. And then this one and this one. Go ahead and put that glue up against your chipboard. And then just fill in a little bit in between. Bring that up and over. Give it a good burnish. Any glue that seeps out, I just kind of take it off with my hand. And once again, I'm going to do a nice smooth edge. All right, do the other side, the opposite. Glue next. Thank you, I don't think I got any up against there. Finish that one too. Any glue that comes out, just kind of wipe it off. Stand it up. Give it a nice smooth edge. So now, because I do my corners the way I do, I want to. I need to tuck in this little excess paper here so it goes around the corner. So I just take my bone folder here and kind of push it in and down around the corner. In and down. We're going to do the same process on this end. Now when I fold this over, I just kind of hold down those little corners just to make sure they don't pop up. And then I burnish again. I'm going to go ahead and stand it up and get a nice smooth edge and repeat the process one more time on the other end. Down and uh, down and in so that it covers the corner. Push those down, bring it up and over. And smooth out your edge. So you'll have two of those, okay? Now we're, the larger one is the same way. We are going to wrap all four sides. So the only difference was, like I said, I cut mine a little bit larger so that I would have the uh, enough paper to go over the corners. But otherwise you do everything the same, even though it's a double layer. And yours might not be, so. I just dropped my I'll go 
go ahead and miter my corners and then I'll put my tape on. Um, I'm going to go just a little bit on the outside just to make sure I have plenty of room. So I didn't cut right up against my device. I gave myself a little bit of extra space here. So it would wrap around the corner pretty well. So even though I'm laying this tool down, I did give it a little bit more space um, um, away from the corner. And now we just wrap it like we did the other one. What you're gonna wanna do next is to put your pattern paper on your um, base. And for the top part, I, am, I went an eighth of an inch smaller. So I did six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And I left this open because you're not really gonna see it because once you have it glued on, It'll, I mean, you could put paper on here if you wanted to, but I'm going to try and preserve my paper. However, I could put like what I did on this piece. I only had two sheets of each uh, pattern or design. So because these are seven by seven, I needed a 12 by 12 for each. So on this one, this is the bottom. I just put some of the artisan on here. So you won't see that when it's sitting down anyway. So that's how I save paper here. But I could go ahead and finish the, I'm, I probably will just so I, it'll bother me. Um, I'll put this paper on here too. So the top and the bottom are like this, okay? So you need two of those and you could go six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths on this paper too. So then on the front piece, now I went ahead and I inked all of my edges. I wanted it to look more like wood. So I took um, vintage photo and went around all of my edges. Now on this piece, you can cover the front, the outside and the inside before you put it together. So I did three and three eighths by five and seven eighths. On the side or the back piece, you're going to go um, five and seven eighths wide again, and then four and seven eighths tall for your pattern paper. You can put paper on the outside and on the inside of the two that have the wings before you put it together. Now on the other two, you can put paper on the outside, um, on the outside, but you cannot put it on the inside until your book or your box is put together. Because when you attach this, you're going to have these that you'll need to cover okay so don't do the inside of the ones that are wrapped on all four sides so once you have your paper that you want you are going to combine this is my back piece so i need the two side pieces and you're going to attach them just like you would an album so you're going to attach one here and you're going to attach the other one on that side okay then the front piece you're going to attach next, all right? And it'll be, uh, let's go ahead and do this part first. So you can use uh, tape or glue or a combination of both. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use, hmm, what am I gonna use? I think I'm going to use some score tape, which is what I normally do. I use a combination of both glue and tape. I want that to lay flat, so I'm gonna put one here. And I usually put one in the center. And then I put one next. Don't put it all the way up to the edge though. You need to your, give yourself a little room, okay? So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna take this backing off and if you have any overhang, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use your finger to, like I have just a little bit here, so I need to bring that up and over. I am gonna use just a little bit of glue then, so I have some wiggle room, and I just kinda of put it in between the tape. Now I do want a very fine line, and I don't want it up against the very edge, so I'm giving myself a little bit of space.
and I'm just going to make sure uh, I didn't put that in far enough and it's too late now. Darn it. I guess it's okay. I might just go ahead and put more. I wanted it to be a little bit closer than that. I have a little bit bigger space than I wanted, but it'll be okay. So now I'm gonna do the other side. This is one fourth inch, the score tape is, and do not put it all the way to the top. Fill in with some glue. And now I'm gonna try and do it the same distance as that one so that it's uniform. a little bit here. All right, and I'm gonna line this up. Again, I'm gonna try and get the same amount of space as I gave the other side. That looks about right. Flip it over. And burnish it down. Now we still can't put the inside papers yet because we still have to connect this front piece like so. So now I'm going to attach it to one side and then I'll be able to paper one of them on the inside, if that makes sense. So I'll go ahead and do this one first. This is why you have to do the wings on the front piece because it's shorter. And so if you had the wings on this piece, you would have to, it wouldn't work with that front one because it's shorter. Okay, go ahead and burnish that. Take off the backing. Okay, and now I want to line this up at the top. So, and then bring it over. Okay, so now we can put the paper on this piece. Okay. And the last one, once the book is connected, we're just gonna have to slide that last one in. So again, these papers are uh, five and seven eighths long and four and seven eighths tall. So I do an eighth of an inch shorter. And burnish that one in. All right, so now we are going to attach this one here. So let's go ahead and put our adhesive on that one. Need 
this is backwards to me. Oh, look at I didn't even put that even close to being straight. It doesn't matter, I guess. I'm doing it sideways. I'll just do that and then I'll fill in the rest with glue. So now I'm going to attach this one. Like so. Uh. Okay, and then you're gonna wanna burnish that. And now you can put the paper on the inside here. So I'm just going to balance that maybe. And I already have it cut. And I'm just gonna glue it and put it right in here. Okay, so I'll just kind of hold this. I guess I don't have to, I can just set something up. That's not there. Okay. Whew. Let's put glue on the back. Of, and I did ink all of my papers. Yep, oh, there it goes. Guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. And just kind of eyeball it. Because it's glue, we have a little bit of time to adjust as needed. And you won't see a whole lot of the inside anyway. Ugh, I did not make that. Ugh, I don't like how I did that, but oh well. Like I said, you won't see much of it anyway. Okay, so there is the base or the main, the sides. Now, the reason for this opening is where the drawer would be after the coffee was ground. This is gonna be where the spine of the book is and we'll pull it out, okay? So now to attach it to the base, all you're gonna do is you're gonna give it some time after you attach this, but you're gonna put glue. I would do the bottom first. Um, I think I want it this direction, okay. And you're going to have a little bit of a border because we made the bottom bigger. And once you put your glue on, you're just going to push down. So just put it on the edge of the chipboard and you're just going to push down and give it some time to dry. And then you're going to place glue on the top and you're going to give it, a ch you'll push down and you'll give it a chance to dry. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cute. And then we're gonna have this on here. Oh, and some beans, Some I bought some fake coffee beans. Okay, so now just glue this to your base. Oh. Let's see. All right, it's time to move on to the book for the inside of our coffee grinder box. So you're gonna need two pieces of chipboard that are five and three fourths by five and three fourths and one that's one and a fourth by five and three fourths for the spine. Remember the spine is what's gonna have a handle on it so we can make it look like a drawer. The wrap or the cardstock to go around the chipboard for um, the covers, it's two at seven and three fourths by seven and three fourths and one that is four and a fourth by seven and three fourths. So the front and back cover, you're both of them you're gonna wrap on all four sides and that spine piece, we're just gonna wrap on two sides. So once you have your chipboard uh, cut out, place your um, score tape on just one side, and then you're going to need a one inch border along all four sides of your chipboard. I went ahead and uh, angled my corners and left a little bit uh, on the edge so that it didn't go straight to the corner. It's about an eighth of an inch away from the corner. Um, and I cut them at an angle, obviously. Did that on all four. I like to put score tape along the outside 
uh, the perimeter of the paper and the chipboard. And then we're gonna go ahead and wrap it just like we did the box. And we're gonna remove the backing. And then when I wrap these, I do one side and then I do the opposite side. And then I do the two other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like before, I do like to put the art glitter glue right up against the chip, ooh, that was too much, uh, chipboard and then fill in the middle here with some glue. And when you bring it up and over, if you have any come out or excess, just kind of wipe it up with your finger. When I use a baby wipe, I usually get fuzz all over, so I just kind of use my finger for that part. Give it a good burnish, and then remember we got to do the sides to make it nice and smooth. Do the opposite side. Put your glue down. Bring it up and over. Give it a good burnish. And the side. Okay, now as we do the opposite sides, we have to remember that the way I do it at an angle, I have to push that excess paper in and down around the corner. And then I can put my glue on. This is obviously a smaller book because it's only got a one and a fourth inch spine. So I'm only gonna do um, two hinges. Give it a good burnish. And you know the routine on the side. Opposite side now. Push those in around the corner. Get to the point where you can do these covers in no time. I like to push these down so they don't come up. And nice and smooth. Okay, so you're going to do the two, the front and back cover the same way. So all four sides. Remember on your spine piece, you leave one and a half inches on either side of the spine and then just one inch top and bottom. We're gonna go ahead and I did do all my creasing. I'm gonna take out at an angle, a triangle on those four corners. I will put a little bit of score tape. I'll just put, I have one eighth inch here. I'll just put a little bit here just so that it's laying down at the edge. And then I'll just fill in with glue on the rest. So when we take off the backing and put our glue in, we want to remember, to, I just put a little dab on either side so that as I tuck that paper around, it'll stay nice and neat around the chipboard. Oopsie. Ooh, that's a lot. I might, my um, skinny tip is clogged and I don't have time to go upstairs and clean it because I wanna get this done because I'm so excited to see what it's gonna look like once it's in that coffee drawer. I think it's going to be really cool looking. Okay. And I'm going to go 
ahead and nice and smooth there on the edge. Blue. Little bit on each side. I think I'm getting a lot of glue on there. I have to clean that. And giving that baby a good burnish. Man, I got glue all over my hands. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make sure we have a defined line here, define here, and we're going to slightly taper, so rest those scissors up against the chipboard and at a slight angle on all four corners. You don't have to take off much. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to place tape and glue on the wings here. And then we're going to attach our cover by going right up against there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put tape on both sides. I usually do about three strips. And remember, you do not put it right up against that chipboard spine. I'm going to leave, I have about an eighth to a fourth of an inch away. And I'll fill in glue instead. Now you can fold this and then lay this on top too. Maybe that's why I'll do it this time. Ooh. I have a little bit of... I think I'll do this side first. Okay. Um, here we go. Taking the backing off. little bit of glue in between my score tape and then right along the edge there and that will spread out flip it over and burnish it other side the same way. A little bit of overhang on my tape. Just a slight amount at the top there. I feel like that's not all the way up there enough. All 
Alrighty. Okay, now you can either, oh, it blew, uh, cover your spine with pattern paper or more of the uh, of your cardstock, the artisan cardstock. I'm trying to decide how I want to do mine. I might use um, the pattern paper, um, but let's go ahead and do our spine, uh, our, what do you call it? Not your, um, our hinges. Okay. So this is five and a half. So my book's five and three fourths tall. This is five and a half tall and it is two and a half inches wide and you're going to score it every half inch mark. So half, one, one and a half and two. And this is how we're going to make our two hinges. So the first two, when you score them, that becomes, when you glue them together, that's hinge number one. So let's get those ready. And then the third rectangle is your um, gusset. And then the last two glued together are going to be your last hinge. So it's just going to be a small book like that. Okay, so I want to check to make sure that I don't have any overhang on my paper. And I don't actually, so I don't have to trim the outsides. And I just use the art glitter glue. And you're going to push that down. hinge number one and the second one the same way If you want a bigger book, obviously you could do that as long as you adjusted your box, uh, your coffee grinder box, so that there was a larger opening. All right, so this is going to be centered on this, but you don't want to do that until you cover this with paper. So I'm going to go ahead, I think I'm going to use pattern paper, uh, the coffee paper. And so if this is five and three fourths tall, you want it uh, five and five eighths tall for your pattern paper. And you want it to cover this, so I'm going to go five and a half, okay? So five and a half by five and three eighths with pattern paper. Then I'm going to put glue on the back here and center this like so. And then we will come back and do the pages. Okay, so let me tell you a couple things. Um, I went ahead and when you're putting this paper down, make sure you don't use glue. You use um, a tape so it doesn't get... Ripley. Um, I went ahead and glued this down. I did ink the edges of my paper and then this is the paper um, that I chose for the cover. Now here's the issue. Um, I made this spine one and a fourth and the opening to the box is one and a half. Well by the time you add these two covers um, it is now a little bit too snug. So you might want to go down to one inch instead of one and a fourth, but here was my plan and I don't know, let me take the top off this. So with this, I'm going to have to slide this in, but it's going to stick out a little bit, but I don't care because it'll, you'll see the coffee grounds. So that's why I chose to do the coffee to kind of make to clear, <laughs> take care of my oops, okay? So you might wanna go one inch instead of one and a fourth. So we have pages to do now. So you're gonna need two that measure five and a half by 11. And we're gonna score both of these in half. So see, I made lemonade out of lemons. That's what I did. Uh, oh, in here. 
instead of crying over it and being upset, I decided I would fix it. And I did. Okay, uh, five and a half on both. Okay, these are our base pages. Fold them in half and make sure they line up when you're doing your burnishing. Sometimes they get off a of hair. Now to put them in our book, we're going to lay one side down and we'll put glue on each side, but you want to make sure it lines up top and bottom. Okay, so you want the same amount of space, uh, um, so you have to kind of double check as you're laying it down. So let's go ahead and put glue on the bottom hinge and I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom because I don't want it to seep out but I'll go pretty close okay we're going to lay this down And I want to make sure that looks pretty even. And we're going to push it down. Now, I am not going to have any open pocket on the uh, top because there's no room. So I can put glue all the way around and seal it shut. So I'll put glue on the hinge part and I'm just gonna go across the top and the bottom to close it and then I'll put on the hinge. Okay. Give it a good burnish. And I'm going to go ahead and flip over the page. Make sure I burnish it on this side real well. And then we'll do the other one the same way. I'm going to turn my book upside down so it's easier for me to work with it that way. And okay, it's going to work. Glue on one side. And again, I don't go all the way down because I don't want any glue oozing out of the bottom of the hinge. Good. And let's close her up. Glue on the top and the bottom on this one, on the hinge.
Burnish her down. I'm going to flip that page over. All right. So now, um, just so you know, when I did my uh, spine at one and a fourth, my paper is also one and a fourth. But it, if you want to close your book to go all the way in, you're going to probably go an inch. Um, but even because of the way we do the book, you do need the full size paper on the spine. The pattern paper that I did, if the book is five and three fourths, I went ahead and went down an eighth. So five and five eighths by five and five eighths. And I, you'll notice I inked my edges and stuff. Okay. So now I'm trying to decide if these corners from, oh, Graphic 45 that I got from the store, I think I'm going to put one here and one down at the bottom, just on the top page, because if it, I don't want it to be even thicker. This part has no problem getting into the opening. It's this part that was too thick. But I love the idea that you can see the coffee ground, so I'm staying positive here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and glue those down. And we'll put our handle here, and I'm just going to use glue. And now I have to, I'll go put in pattern paper here and here, and then I have to decide what to do with these pages because I haven't decided yet. I have a feeling they're going to be exactly the same, um, but I don't know until I start uh, putting it together. So stay tuned and we'll get to the pages next. All right, I'm going to show you the pages. I did, um, I'm going to do the two pages the same so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. I did put the corners on here. I just want to say again, if you want this book to fit all the way in the drawer, instead of making this one and a fourth, make it um, one inch instead. Um, or one, and, uh, I don't even know if one and an eighth will work, but like I said, mine's gonna have to stick out a little bit, but I'm okay with that because of the paper. Okay, so when you open the book, we're gonna have a pocket on the inside cover and the back will be exactly the same. So you can put something in here, so that's a pocket. And then this just unties and it opens up that way. Now, I will tell you that putting this back in this little hole is a pain in the rear, so I might have to make my hole a little bit bigger. Yeah, I'm going to have to, so I'm going to put that off to the side and not tie it again. Um, this is a little belly band, and then this also is a little pocket, so you can also put something inside of there, just like a cut apart or something, and I'll use probably the ephemera for that. When you turn it over, this is a pocket. This is a magnetic closure, and you can put things in here. It's not a very deep pocket, though, just so you know. And then on the back, we have a three-page waterfall, and it's a tie closure. Okay, so we're going to do the page here just like that, and then we'll also do this back. Um, I think we are going to start with the back page. So let me give you some measurements of what we're going to need. Okay. All right, so for the pocket itself, it's six and three fourths by three, and then you're gonna need these two little doors, and those are two and a half by three. So um, when you're ready to put the doors on, you're gonna go ahead and put the three inches across the top and score it at a half. You'll notice that I did ink around the edges, okay? Same on the other one. So put the three inches in and score to half. So this six and three fourths by three, we're gonna score on three sides. So if you place the six and three fourths inches across the top, you're gonna to score to half on each end, and then you'll turn it to the three inch side and score it a half. So just like any other pocket, you are going to miter the top, and you're gonna cut off that square at the bottom at an angle. Okay. And I usually don't ink my cardstock, but I just think it looks better with this coffee paper. 
go ahead and burnish. Now you also wanna be able to cover it with uh, your pattern paper before you adhere it to the book. I think that's easier. So I am gonna have to do some inking real quick. I just do it real fast, doesn't have to be neatly done. Now let's go ahead and put the paper on the doors. So these end up being two and a half by two and a half. So I do my paper an eighth of an inch smaller. So it's two and three eighths by two and three eighths. So let's go ahead and glue that on. Normally I don't decorate on camera, but this one is gonna have to because it's just easier to put this paper on before adhering it. And I always give it a good burnish. And then we'll do the back. I'm gonna kind of line these up just to make sure that I put them on about the same. And then the back is two and three eighths by two and three eighths also. And I just did the opposite side for those. I've already inked the paper to save some time. that. I need to order some new more glue. I did see that she has more art glitter glue in now that it's not cold out. Now you cannot put the pattern paper on here until you put the doors on. We also want to poke our holes right now. Now I have this thing. I would not recommend it. You can't see where it's punching the hole and it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of clunky. I don't know where I got it. Okay. Now, <laughs> the hard part. If they're not exactly lined up, I'm just gonna have to live with that because it takes too long on this thing. I usually have an eye for detail, but this is one of those times where I'm just gonna have to eyeball it. Let's see how close I got. Not very. Oh, my Lanta, that's terrible. Uh, I'll have to go back and do a fix. That was dumb. Don't use this kind of punch. That's awful, awful. I am keeping this one for myself, though, so I guess it's not that bad. Um, I am going to miter the top and the bottom here slightly on each of them. Okay, and just give it some glue. And let's line it up all the way to the edge and look at the top and the bottom to make sure that lines up and give it a good press same way with the other side I turn it sideways it's just easier for me
Okay, and now you can put the pattern paper on the back here. Again, do an eighth of an inch smaller, so it's two and three eighths inches tall. Give it a burnish and then we will adhere it to our back cover. So when we put this on, we want it to go all the way to the outside edge and all the way to the bottom. We don't want it to get in the way of our spine. And so you do have to make sure you line it up all the way to the right. And put your adhesive on your half inch pieces. Pinch in the sides and the bottom. Burnish it. Give it a good push because it's got several layers. All right, and then that'll tie. And then I am going to use this direction does that go this direction and I will put that behind there just like I did in the front okay so this will be is it five and three eighths uh, no five and three fourths so it's five and five eighths and you just have to make sure it's long enough to be tucked into that pocket and you'll adhere it like so okay might as well do it while i'm at it so i do i'll ink it real fast just need to ink the top and a little bit of the sides because you won't see the bottom i could do that side too Eh, i'll keep it consistent with the front My glue is really getting down low. It hurts my hands when I squeeze it. All right. There's our back cover. So the front and back are exactly alike. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Um, okay, so now let's start looking at this flap that goes on the page. So here are the pieces you're gonna need for that one. Here are the measurements. Um, one that's four by six and an eighth, a two by five, a three by one and a fourth, and a three by five, okay? So starting the flap is four by six and one eighth. So you're gonna place the six and one eighth across the top of your scoreboard. You're gonna score it half and at five eighths, okay? You do need a little bit of a gusset because of the envelope that's underneath. Can't get that up now. Um, the two by five, you're gonna place the five inches across the top and score it one half on each end. The three by one and a fourth, put the three across the top, score it half on each end. Oops. And the uh, three by five, 
is a pocket. So put the five inches across the top, score at one half on each end, and then rotate it and score at one half. Okay, so we, we do have to uh, burnish all of our score lines and I am gonna need to go back and ink. So you can fast forward this part if you need to or want to. I'll try and go fast. That's usually when I make a mistake. <laughs> when you have a 1 8 inch gusset, it's hard to score that. So there's a little bit of a gusset there. This is a pocket, so again, we're going to taper the top. We're going to take off that square in the bottom at an angle. Let's go ahead and fold on the score lines. And now we are going to ink real fast. This is uh, what's it called? Vintage photo. Round and round. This one we want to do on the front and on the back because when you turn the page, you'll see the edge. Okay, so flip it over. And I don't actually do the side that's closest to the book, so I'm not going to do that one on the inside. We're getting there. This is the belly band. And this is like a little mini pocket for the ephemera. All right, so again, we wanna put our pattern paper on quickly. So I've already done my cutting. So I am going to just adhere my pieces. So again, an eighth of an inch smaller. So if it's two inches across, it'll be one and seven eighths. If it is um, one and a fourth inch, I'll change, make it one and one eighth. there's that one now for this belly band I did bring it up a little bit so I'm going to have a separate sheet of paper here and a separate one there I think that's what I did yeah um, or actually I could put this whole thing on first yeah, uh, I don't like it when I can see these little half-inch flappy-doos. I don't think it'll be that noticeable, so I'll just go ahead and do it this way. The belly band's two inches wide, so this is one and seven-eighths inches wide. It's four inches tall, so the pattern paper is three and seven-eighths inches tall. look at my book how far up did I go about to there it looks like 
So I didn't want extra bulk, so I'm gonna put glue on the half inch sides, but I'm also, I'm gonna actually taper this. Uh, yeah, maybe you won't see it as much. Just on the top. Just on the top. So you're gonna put glue on the half inch sides and then just a little bit at the bottom too to close it up. And I went up about that far. Give it a good burnish. I should have probably mitered the bottom too. All right, so this flap, the half inch goes to the left hand side and this is gonna go in the center of it. I'm an eyeball person when it comes to this. You can measure and find the center if you want. So let's see. Yeah, that's not in the center. There we go, that's better. Give it a burnish. Now when I put this paper in, and you slide it in underneath, oh, I gotta let this dry a little bit. No, oh, there it goes. So when I do this, I just stick it down and then I'm just going to lift the ends and I'll just lift that up and put glue down here. So to me, that's easier. You don't have to have that glue in the center. It's not going to go anywhere. And then I'll do the same on the other end. I do try and get it as close to the edge of the paper as possible, the pattern paper, so the corners lay down. Flip it over, and the pocket is going to go on the end here, like so. And the paper I have for that one, did I cut it out? Yes, I did. It'll be like that. Burnish it up. And we're going to make sure we put it all the way to the end and line it up on the sides. Perfect. 
perfect. I always struggle about which direction to put the paper, even though the pocket, I didn't know if I should put the pattern paper the other direction or not, but the paper I had fit better. It was already the right length and width. So, and then I'm just going to do what I did. The other uh, first page I did, I had a green background. This one is going to be this red color. And it only has to be long enough so it goes under the pocket just a little bit. Slide it underneath there. And I don't want it to go over the score, that um, one eighth inch gusset. And then I am gonna put a cut apart on here. I didn't really like the plane. So I went ahead and cut one of the cut aparts. I had to trim it a little bit smaller than what it was. And I'll just center that. All right, now I'm not going to attach this to the book quite yet. But just to kind of give you an idea, that will be right here. Okay. And when we lift this up on this page, uh, we have the pocket. So let me get you the measurements for that. Um, here it is. You need one that is five and three eighths by five. Uh, actually, no, this is the waterfall. Hold on. Well, you can cut these and get these ready. You'll need three that are five and three eighths by five. And you're going to put the five inches across the top and score it a half. So this is the waterfall. You need three of those. That's actually the back page, but the pocket that I was trying to get to, um, you'll need a six and a half by four and a fourth and a five and a half by four and one fourth piece. So the one that's five and a half by four and a fourth, place your four and a fourth inches across the top and score it a half. That's going to be our flap. You're going to need a magnet also, just so you know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some burnishing here and inking. Cut the, the corners at an angle. Miter the top. Let's do our inking too. And where's my brush? Where'd I put it? Oh, right here. Just go across the top a little bit. Fold down your half inch, do the side, fold in your half inch, do the bottom, and the other side. Okay. Now the top, I did mine at an angle. I'm going to slightly miter this half inch and that half inch. see here. I could do the pocket exactly the same, which is at an angle. Yeah, I probably should. I didn't like how I... I'm going to go ahead and measure up and over. Let's see, what did I do here? 
Um, it's about one and a half inches. Need a pencil, put a little tick mark, and about one and a half inches up. Is that right? I had it over one and a half, and uh, it's about one and a fourth up. Okay. And then we'll just get our trimmer and we'll cut it at that angle. Put your little tick marks in the cutting channel here. And I'll go back and erase those. And then I'll have to do the same on the other one. One and a half over. And it was one and a fourth from the bottom. Put it in the cutting channel. Let's erase those little marks. Now I can ink this one. I am gonna do this one on both sides because when you open the flap, you'll see the opposite side. So we need to put our magnet on and we're going to do that before we put on our pattern paper. So I'm using the basic gray from Country Craft Creations. I'm going to need a positive and a negative. Ugh, come on. That's two positives. So if you get your book, you can kind of see where to put this. Let's go ahead and put our page on first before we get into this too far because then I'll forget and I'll be mad at myself. So I'm going to go ahead and center this on the page. Make sure you don't put glue on that one eighth inch gusset, just on the half inch. And I'm gonna turn it sideways. go nice all right so let's go ahead and lay this down and we don't want it to go over the score here of the gusset about right. So then this is going to go here. 
So we want the magnet to be up closer towards the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off of one. And we'll just put it up here near the top. Don't get it too close because you got to put paper over it and you don't want it to, to show the magnet. And then let's go ahead and put this one on. Turn it sideways all the way to the end. So now we can take the backing off of this magnet. And we're going to press this down. All right. So on the other book or on the other page, I put a solid color and then I put the beans down as the border. So I'll do that with this one too. Some people do prefer a one fourth inch smaller mat. Some people like an eighth. I usually go an eighth unless I'm short on paper. All right, we gotta give this a good burnish, especially around the magnet. I want it to lay down the top so I'm going to keep rubbing that until I know it's got a good seal okay and then I'm going to go ahead let me see how far up I put that just about that much about a fourth of an inch up this is cute too Fourth of an inch. All right, you're going to put paper back here. What did I do on this one? Let's see. Well, is this long enough? Is it wide enough? No, nope, it's too short. I'll just use this. So this is five and a half. I need it to be five and three eighths. Yep, go ahead and ink it. Like speedy version. Slide that down. Make sure you don't go over that score for the flap. Come on, get in there. burnish okay so this piece when you cut it you're gonna want it five and three eighths by three and five eighths and then you're gonna measure um, an eighth of an inch smaller on your 
for cutting the angles. So let me give you an example. If this is my paper, because we cut this an eighth of an inch smaller, we're gonna measure over an eighth of an inch difference. So instead of going over one and a half to cut, it would be one and three eighths. And then what do we do on the other side? One and a fourth, it would be one and one eighth. And then you would cut it at an angle, okay? Or you can just put the paper, lay it down, draw a line and then trim inside that line. That's fine too. Okay, I'll go back and do that. Um, last, it does get pretty tight here, just so you know. Um, this one is a waterfall. I don't like how that looks, but... Uh, and we're going to go all the way to the outside edge. So I did cut it a little bit shorter so it doesn't hit your book when you close it. And with the waterfall, you place one down. I'm going to go ahead and um, put my pattern paper on. I already have it cut. I wanted this to be on the front. Sure, I get those corners, and we're not doing a magnet closure, we're doing a ribbon closure. Oh, I didn't, I gotta ink this, I gotta go back and do that. I inked my paper, my pattern paper, but I didn't ink the actual flaps here. So, I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm going to do the other side too. I am going to leave the backs empty. I'm not going to put any pattern paper on there. Okay. You don't miter when you're doing a waterfall. You keep everything intact. Ink, ink, ink. Other side also. One more. just to get it all put together, see what it looks like. I did get my coffee beans, my fake coffee beans in the mail today. All right, let's go ahead and lay these down. I'm gonna spread some of the fake coffee beans on the top, like they're coming out of that burlap bag, and some on the actual top. I kind of like to see how it's going to look layered so you can kind of get your colors right. Get a, like every other color. I do dark light, dark light, or I do brown, blue, brown, blue. I like to have it flow nice. Now I do put also in between my pages, I wanna cover a little bit of that one half inch that we glue down so I have 3 8 inch strips here. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to get a piece of ribbon. Wow, I didn't. And 
how big is this? About 12, about 18 inches long. Find the center and we're just gonna glue it in the center here. I'm not gonna glue it, I'll put some score tape in the center to keep it down. Again, I just eyeball. And it'll be covered with paper, so it'll keep it down also. There's the center. All right. And now we will start putting the waterfall on getting glue all over my hands. So I'm going to turn this sideways. And I'm going to make sure that I go all the way to the outside edge. Okay, I'm going to have to put some glue on there. Or some blue uh, ink to kind of cover up that little rip. So you put glue on the half inch. Again, you don't miter. We're gonna line it up with this outside. Go ahead and lift it up. Okay, the next one, we're gonna bump up right up against that half inch. Sure it lines up on the outside also. And one more page. And then we'll be putting a piece of paper down there. You could put a hidden pocket there if you wanted to. I just didn't want my book to get too bulky. over a little bit. I don't think I had it lined up quite right. Okay, you will put a piece of paper here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go now and put in the 3 8 inch pieces on the half inch part. These are too long, I gotta trim the ends. Um, if the page is five and 3 8 this should be five and a fourth. And I have a feeling I didn't do that. Nope, I didn't. So five and a fourth inch long, three eighths wide. And then you just lay that down on the half inch, center it, and that kind of gives it a finished look there. Next one. And I am going to do one on this last page here just to keep it 
consistent. And then I'll have to measure to see what size paper to put on this bottom piece. So we made it a little bit shorter so it wouldn't bump into the side here. Um, let's measure. So I know that we need five and uh, one eighth by, by three and seven eighths. Okay, let's see if I have something handy. It's about that size. It's already cut. That would be too nice, wouldn't it? I guess I could use green. Would that fit? Ooh, it does. I'm going to use that. Perfect. Let's double check. Yes, it is. Let me ink it. And then this helps keep that ribbon down. And we'll tie it closed. And then I'm going to wrap this up. The only thing I'm going to do is I'll uh, include pictures. I'll probably do a walkthrough of just the actual project. And then you can go look at that to see what it looked like when it was all finished. Because I want to get this recorded or this uh, tutorial up on my YouTube page in plenty of time to get let people get started. The only other thing we need to do is add a knob on the, make sure that the, your ribbon's flat, um, a knob on the outside spine. So it looks like a drawer and then that's it. Okay, and then we'll tie that closed. tie very well on these books. I don't know why my fingers are too big or something. I always drop it. Come on. See, it takes me a couple tries and I don't know why. Probably these stupid nails. Oh my gosh, did I drop it again? Ugh, close enough. Okay. The only other thing, I gotta poke that back in. The only other thing then is to get your knob and you can either use E6000 uh, and put it right in the center so it looks like it's a pull drawer. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna put anything on here. If I do, I don't want it to show. I might have to find a small cutout or cut apart. We'll have to see. Yeah, so uh, I'll do a walkthrough. Here are the coffee beans that I'm going to glue onto the top. Like they're coming out of this, the burlet bag. I just stuck some filler in here. And I'm going to have beans coming out on the top. But I got these off of Etsy. They're just plastic fake beans. How realistic are those? Oh, I like them. Perfect. And they're not beads. They don't have holes in them. All right. Okay, I hope this was an easy project for you. Um, I apologize for the spine issue, but as it turns out, it'll be okay. So I don't know if you can see, but it's going to look like the drawer is out and there's beans. You can see the coffee beans. How cool. All right, I'll finish it up and I will put a walkthrough up on YouTube so you can take a look at it. And then you can make this project yourself. Uh, the paper's from Country Craft Creations. And um, leave me a message if you have any questions and have fun with this. It's a lot of fun to make.